Well, my name is Bob Shalkoff. I'm the founding director of the Marine Mammal Stranding Center, and I founded it 34 years ago. Uh, originally starting in uh, Atlantic City at Gardner's Basin and then moving here to Brigantine uh, where we've continued working over the years. We've done over 4,000 animals uh, along the coast of New Jersey and we do handle the entire coast of New Jersey. It's about 1,800 miles of coastline. Everybody thinks of the ocean as being New Jersey, but they're not thinking of the back bays are twice as long as the, as the coastline is. So we have a lot of territory and only four people to handle that. We're critical in in collecting and uh, rescuing marine mammals and sea turtles. Sea turtles because they are an endangered species. Uh, everything is seasonal. We get this, the spring brings in the young dolphins that come in and maybe stillborn or injured uh, uh, at birth. Uh, then in the summer we see the sea turtles coming in and abundance of four different species of uh, endangered sea turtles. And then in the late fall and into the winter months is our seal season. Um, the numbers can vary. In, in 2011, we did 122 seals. Uh, this year, we did eight. So we never know what we're going to have coming in. But we do know that we're on call seven days a week, and we're always ready to respond to any calls that we get uh, throughout the night or day. Well, we're not a research facility. We're a rehabilitation facility. Research comes from what we produce in our data collection. Uh, what we find with these animals, if we find an animal with an unusual disease, this is all passed on to the, the quote-unquote researchers. But that's not our job. The research facility is, is a primary uh, function in other parts of the state. Well, the, the Stranding Center is important to New Jersey because we are the only uh, letter holder in the state that's federally authorized to pick up these animals. They all are federally protected animals, marine mammals and sea turtles as well. So we respond to those animals to determine if they're injured, what's wrong with them, how we can recover those animals, uh, rehabilitate them, and turn them loose in the wild again. The dead animals, of course, we have to find out why they're dead. Are they hit by boat? Were they shot by somebody? Were they caught in fishing line? Or did they swallow hooks? This is all important information that goes to the federal government uh, for an overall picture of the health of, of the uh, marine mammals and sea turtles in the world. We've done strandings uh, from Maine all the way down to uh, uh, North Carolina and actually had animals sent to us from Florida for rehab since Florida is not a, a known destination of seals for the most part. So those facilities that would normally handle tur uh, turtles and dolphins had no idea what to do with seals and they actually shipped them to us so we could rehab them. Well, the impact of not having us available here in New Jersey would be a lot of animals lying on a beach slowly dying where people deciding they would do their own thing and take the animals home for treatment and then have them die. Or actually, uh, we're seeing more and more people trying to pick these animals up, especially baby seals, and then they get bitten and we're responsible now for holding that healthy seal in quarantine until that person recovers from the bite. We've pioneered different methods of capture uh, techniques. Uh, we invented a, uh, or I invented a, a net that's used for seals, especially uh, to keep them from uh, hurting their mouth from uh, biting on the net or anything like that. It's a very simple tool that is now used worldwide. Um, we've, we've learned over those periods of time how to best recover those animals, how to rehab them, and our rehab numbers are over 90 percent. We're very pleased with that. Our staff works very hard to keep those numbers up so we can get that large percentage back into the wild. After 34 years, I think the success is that 90 percent recovery rate. Um, the, the fact that we're able to teach so many people in the state uh, to be our volunteers, they are our eyes. They go out on the beaches first. They call us uh, when they see something. Uh, we have a, a stranding course that we teach that give them the education to know what to do when they go on the beach and that helps us out before we even leave the stranding center. We have photos of the animal on the beach, we have a history of that animal and we can see what's going on with it before we respond. I think the biggest failure we've had is the fact that we don't have the room that we really need to expand. Uh, the stranding numbers have gone up over the years. Uh, we're fixed in our location and the number of uh, buildings we could put up or the number of tanks. Uh, it's a challenge because we have to keep moving animals, getting them healthy enough, kicking them out, getting more in. It, it's uh, very trying during the winter months to keep this, this flow of animals going because we can't just release them. They have to be healthy first. The, the mission of the center has always been the same, rescue, rehabilitate, and release. 
the change comes in the numbers of animals that we've handled. Like I said, we've done over 4,000 animals and we've had uh, early days of six to seven animals a year to right now we're up to over 100 animals uh, for nine months of the year. Uh, last year we finished with about 180 animals, so those numbers are always up there and there's always a challenge. And we can't tell you a typical stranding is this or that because there is no typical stranding. Well, we'd like to make sure that the center continues to operate, that we have the funding coming in to do that operation. That's the most critical part for us right now is because of the, the loss of, of donations over the, the past couple of years, uh, not only on a national basis, but for us it was a... Uh, it's critical in buying food and medicine. A lot of the facilities similar to ours are supported by universities and or aquariums. We're solely supported by the sale of our gift shop here, memberships and special fundraisers like the golf outing coming in up in a week or two. Well, our budget uh, roughly is $650,000 a year. That covers salaries. It covers $65,000 a year in insurance costs. We have two boats to insure, four vehicles, all the staff, uh, workman's comp, all this is consumed by us. As I said, the other facilities in other states are covered by universities or aquariums. They pick up that cost. Utility costs here, um, it's all on us. So the, the membership, the sponsorship that we just received this, this uh, spring by the Atlantic Club, uh, helping us out with the, the big screen TV donation and backing us with uh, special fundraisers there. That's a, a really big help to us. And of course, the, the golf outing coming up on the 21st is going to produce more funding. That's going to be needed for the food. Last year alone, we spent $16,000 just on food for the animals, not to mention the medical costs, transportation costs is really going sky high. Uh, the F-550 we use for larger animal only gets seven miles to the gallon. So that is a quite costly uh, uh, part of our budget right now. Well, as I mentioned, uh, of the $100,000 that we get from the budget, from the federal government rather, the grant, 65 of it is spent just on insurance, not to mention salaries for the veterinarian, travel expenses, equipment, uh, maintenance and upkeep of the facility. It's far higher than what we, we see in that, that proposed budget cut coming up. It may result in laying off personnel, but at this time, that's even worse because we need as many as we can get. We could use even more staff right now. We just don't have the money to pay for them. Every month is a challenge. I mean, we are very careful how we spend the money, uh, where we use it. We look for grants and private donations and bequeathments that helps us quite a bit. Uh, but we can never count on that because we don't know when that's coming in or the number and volume of animals that are going to be alive versus dead. Any move we would make outside of Brigantine or to new property in Brigantine would have to be at least a three million dollar cost um, in building. We would build it as simply as possible to do the most important part of our job which is water, using water and we'd have to be close to that water supply. Um, the only way we could do that is starting from the ground up brand new and that's a cost, uh, a cost that we can't afford right now.